I was watching a video the other day on YouTube and it was sponsored by some truck driving school and it was breaking down skidding all about skidding in a big truck and they they broke it down into four categories they broke it down into tractor jackknife trailer jackknife front wheel lockup and total wheel lockup and I've been driving for about 40 years and I thought huh that's interesting I never thought about the different types of skids there were all I knew was when I went into a skid it scared the heck out of me and I wasn't thinking what was locked up or what was jackknifed what I was focusing on was getting the thing straight and that's what you've got to do you've got to keep your head cool and focus on what you're doing if the trailer has kicked out to the passenger side steer into the skid but steer gradually into the skid don't overcorrect just steer gradually and just slightly into the skid to counteract it you don't want to make a violent wheel movement because that'll put you right off track the object of the game here is to get the thing straight now most skids I, I'd want to hazard a guess I'd say 90% of the skids are caused by a combination of traveling too fast for the road conditions and bad weather particularly slippery snowy weather that combination seems to be a perfect formula for skidding a truck now you can do it with a brake lock up on on dry pavement but it doesn't really happen very often most of the time you're going too quickly and the roads too greasy for the speed that you're going or you're coming into a curve too quickly and you've then you decide you're going too fast in the curve so you hit the brake and she gets all out of shape so the first thing you want to do is get the thing back in shape now everyone has different different ideas on how to go about this but I'll tell you what works for me I'm out of Canada so we get lots of snowy roads up here what I do is I take my feet right off the the clutch the gas and the brake and I just concentrate on the steering at first getting the thing straight first then I start to worry about slowing it down now here's something else that guys will argue with but it's always worked for me and it works for all the guys I know that ran in bad weather I use the Jake brake to slow down primarily so once I get the thing straight I'll flick on the Jake brake now if it's really really greasy out you may want to adjust and set the pressure down into two heads so the Jake isn't at full strength and if it's really bad you can even bump it down into into one it only affects the one head on the engine but it's still it's still slowing you down so I'm straight I'm letting the Jake walk it down once I feel that I'm getting control of the vehicle I'll try feathering the pedal I don't ever touch this in a skid I'll try slowing it down with the pedal and then just slowly safely ease it over to the side I've been in a few skids in my time let me tell you about the one that sticks in my mind right now I had uh, I had come out of Effingham in the morning I was on 70 I was headed east it was still dark out and everything was fine when I left Effingham it was dark it was a it was a winter morning but you know the temperature was fairly moderate and I everything felt good I eased out of Effingham and I was headed eastbound I was up up doing the, the speed limit and somewhere around the Indiana line I, I was watching way up ahead of me and I could see a car oh three quarters of a mile in front of me and all of a sudden he turned sideways on the road and I thought uh oh and I hit the Jake brake I was in third spot on the Jake and I hit the Jake brake to start winding it down but I was a little too late and I was already it had already gotten greasy underneath me and I felt the trailer kick out to the passenger side so I steered into the skid now at the time I was pulling a spread axle reefer and I swear that spread axle helped create enough drag that it helped push the trailer back straight again but it can happen in an instant skids can be a scary thing you just don't want to do it bottom line so object number one take your feet off the power don't touch the gears get the thing straight focus on what you're doing and here's a point too not to be distracted driving and not to be on the cell phone 
because when things go sour, they can go sour really fast. So you've got to have your head in the game at all times. You can't be yakking on the phone to one of your buddies and, and hit a patch of ice and go sideways because that, that split second where you, you throw out the phone and grab the wheel can be enough to make you go into a slide that you can't get out of. If you can't get the thing straight, you might as well just hang on and go for the ride. Because once it's out of shape and you can't get it back, you're gone. So you might as well just sit back, try to control the damage to a minimum, and ride it out. Once you slide into the ditch or the shoulder or whatever it is you're going to hit, as soon as the truck stops, shut off the hydro. Because a broken fuel tank and juice from the batteries can be a bad combination. That's step one. Step two, look in the mirrors. Stay in the cab, look in the mirrors and survey your surroundings because you don't know if there's not another 18 barreling down on you sideways at the same time. So if he's going to whack you, you're safer in the cab than standing out beside the truck when he hits you. So pay close attention before you get out of the truck to look around at your surroundings and make sure there's nothing that's going to hit you. Step three, when you do feel like it's going to be safe to get out of the truck, get out of the truck and get the heck away from the truck. Don't stand close to the truck. Don't stand on the edge of the road. Don't worry about putting triangles and flares out right away because that's a really good way to get run over. Get up on the embankment away from any traffic that can slide into you because if you've slid, everybody else is sliding. And if you're in a high traffic area, you just don't want to be there like a bowling pin when the next car comes along and nails you. Get well away from the truck. Now's the time to get on the cell phone. Now you can play with your cell phone and call 911. Call the troopers or whatever and let them know what's happening where you are and, and uh, they, they need to get out there and assist the situation. Once, Sadly, once the traffic is all banged up and starting to grind to a halt, then you can go about setting out flares. But at the same time, keep one eye on the road. Keep one eye on what's coming at you because you just don't know what's going to pop over the hill and slide into you and kill you maybe. So always keep that in mind. Skids are a dangerous thing. There's nothing funny about them. So you want to avoid them at all costs and that's why distracted driving is always a bad idea because you've got to keep your head in the game because you just don't want to end up in a situation like that and you don't want to end up skidding into uh, into the ditch and having a car slide underneath the trailer and taking the roof off the car and killing the people inside and i've seen that happen too it's not you know it's not you that gets hurt but when your trailer sideways on the road cars can go right underneath it and it's not pretty believe me if you've got a cb radio and i think you should have one always run on 19 and monitor it listen to it because if guys start to slide up ahead of you Sometimes they'll let you know that the roads are turning bad or you'll get guys going the other way to tell you to back it down because the road's turning bad. And that's one good thing about a CB radio. Back in the day, we always had these things to warn us about stuff like that. It, and they're not common these days anymore. And it's a shame because everyone uses their phone, but they can't phone everybody to tell them the road just turned bad. The CB's great for that. And the road conditions can change just with a couple of degrees drop in temperature. And that's all it takes to turn it from water to ice sometimes. It's just that temperature change. Even an altitude change can take the road from rain and wet to ice just by, just by getting higher up. Something I've spec'd in every one of my trucks, I think it should be standard equipment, is an outside temperature gauge. And that's a great indicator of when the weather is going south on you and you can monitor above freezing and below freezing just just by checking the gauge and it's a real help to tell when the road may start to turn icy i wouldn't be without one one trick you can try if the road is right for this and i've done it a couple of times is if there's a high snow bank a fairly high snow bank at the side of the road i'm not talking about a ditch or anything like that but if you can actually get the truck over up against the snowbank, you can use a snowbank to help you straighten the thing out. And I've done that a couple of times and it works, but you want to be careful doing it. You don't want to go down into a ditch, but you can use a snowbank to straighten out. Pay attention.
don't overdrive drive for the conditions pay attention to what the conditions are doing and monitor it all the time because like i say it can go bad in a split second and that's why you don't be on want to be on the cell phone yakking away you've got to be focused on your driving hopefully you'll never experience something like this if you do find yourself going into a skid stay cool don't overreact get it straight steer yourself out of trouble stay calm and i will see you on the backhaul